Vaigriji ka khalsa, Vaigriji ki fateh. Uh, nice to see you guys again. Uh, see some familiar faces, some new faces. Uh, so thank you so much for having me uh, to the Sakhi Sikhya team. Um, today's topic is Chardikala. You know, and this this idea of Chardikala, you know, although it's it's not exactly exclusive to the Sikh pant. Uh, the, the the way it's presented or the way it's conducted uh, within the Sikh panth uh, or the Sikh tradition uh, is is very interesting. Uh, so we often throw around the concept of Jardikla and, and this this talk, by the way, is is meant to be more of a a dialogue than rather than the end all be all kind of thing. Uh, we talk about Jardikla and. And we often associate it with a, a, this idea of rising spirits. You know, that's how it's translated into English, you know, uh, rising spirits. And I kind of wonder what that means because, first of all, what is, what is a spirit? You know, what, what does a spirit have to do with, with our, our everyday lives? Well, you know, we say in Punjabi, if someone's trying to do some kind of work, you know, koi kam koi karta pya, and we're like, dil la ke kar. You know, put your heart into it. You know, just don't put 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 some effort into it, but not just physical effort, but almost like an internal effort. You know, um, so that's what a spirit is. Spirit is something that even if I was doing this talk, you know, I was doing this talk physically. I'm you're listening to it physically. You know, without the spirit connection, you know, without me putting my spirit into it, without you putting your spirit into it. The, the magic won't happen, you know. So the idea of spirit is that there's, there's, it's a human, it's a very human experience. It's, it's, it's beyond the more mundane uh, mechanics of, of how we, you know, conduct everyday lives. It's, it's beyond that. It, it requires a second component um, to make that magic happen. That, that is called a spirit. So rising spirit, you know. Jardikla means a rising spirit. Well, that spirit that you just put into this, this formula is now meant to continuously grow. You know, and I want to focus on that. I want to I write this word down here. Uh, continuously growing. Okay? That C dot is continuously. Okay? It's something that's always improving, something that's always growing. You know? And I kind of want to, I kind of take a hard look at our community sometimes and I'm like, you know what? We talk about Jardikla, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to say Jardikla with this technology here. We talk about Jardikla, but oftentimes more than others, I find that we're not in Jardikla. You know, we're not continuously growing, we're not continuously learning, we're not continuously involving, you know. We're, we kind of pride ourselves with this idea of being a timeless army. You heard that before? Yeah, we kind of pride ourselves with this idea of being timeless, right? Akali Foj. Yeah? Uh, but it, it, you know, me and my friend, we were having a conversation the other day, and he made this comment, and he said that you know, for for an army that prides itself, to, or I don't know his exact wording, uh, but he said that for an army, the, the, what I took away from that conversation was from an army that prides itself for being timeless, we're stuck in the past, you know, we're 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 kind of stuck in the past where certain things we're not we're not really uh, challenging ourselves on, and and I know this topic is. What I'm saying is pretty vague, but hopefully by the end of this conversation, we'll have some more depth to it. So the idea of Jardikla growing is related to being timeless. So this is just an introduction to our talk. What I want to do now is do a little Mangla Jaran to kind of get our minds together, uh, suited and grounded, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay, how's that sound? Yeah. All right, cool. Vaheguru Sahib Ji Ham yav gun pare ek gun nahi Amrit chad bikha bikha khahi Maya moho 
ਪਰਮ ਪੈ ਪੂਲੇ ਸੁਤ ਦਾਰਾ ਸਿਉ ਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਲਗਾਈ ਇਕ ਉਤਮ ਪੰਥ ਸੁਣਿਓ ਗੁਰ ਸੰਗਤ ਤੇ ਮਿਲੰਤ ਜਮਤ ਰਾਸ ਮਿਟਾਈ ਇਕ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਪਾਠ ਕੀਰਤ ਕੀ ਗੁਰ ਰਾਮਦਾਸ ਰਾਖੋ ਸਰਨਾਈ ਗੁਰ ਰਾਮਦਾਸ ਰਾਖੋ ਸਰਨਾਈ so continuously growing timeless these two things are related but separated how are we timeless you know can anyone tell me how are we timeless anything that comes to your mind when i say the word timeless what yes our guru is timeless very good that's exactly what i was going for <sighs> there's a lot of things that can change okay and they change with time one of those things is language language changes with time okay language that that l thingy there is language language changes with time what else can change with time culture culture very good culture changes with time what else can change with time countries the borders of countries do they change with time okay go right down countries regions what else science science very good so uh philosophies thinking styles right okay people people very good people can change yeah yeah environment social environment cultural environment you know the actual environment <laughs> okay i think we got a good good bunch here all these things can change right but benji said something really nice what can't change is the guru yeah the guru can't change the guru is timeless okay what is the guru well we have guru granth sahib ji but deeper still is is the teachings we must say is that when they were asked by the siddhs who is your guru guru nanak dev responded by saying shabad guru sortan chela right that the guru is the shabad the teachings and the teachings of the guru are timeless you know and you you wouldn't you realize that when you compare if you do comparative religions right when you compare sikhi with other religious texts right if you compare guru granth sahib with other religious texts like the bible or uh, the quran or you you notice that there is a, there is i find a stark difference and that difference that i find is that guru granth sahib ji's bani or the teachings of guru granth sahib ji yes it's written in a is 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 composed in rag but the contents of guru granth sahib ji they seem to me they speak to me very differently then the uh, contents of other other scriptures and maybe it's because they've been translated over time there could be other factors to it but it just seems to me that you know each shabad guru granth sahib ji speaks to a concept called the tat the tat the essence you know it, it focuses like let's say the conversations about i don't know the conversations about uh, what happens to someone Okay let, let let's look at the idea of of karm philosophy free will philosophy versus non free will right preordained philosophy like these two things right like if you were trying to find you know the conversation in guru nanak ji it's almost like the guru steps above the conversation of free will versus preordained destiny and talks about something up here you know it's almost like you know he, he what he talks about is like you know purab karm ankur jab prakte he talks about this idea of when my pre my previous done deeds or karms have their their fruits have sprouted tab pete purkh rasak bairagi then that moment i found uh, this being i 
i.e. the Guru. I found the Guru. So it's like, up until my life, until I didn't find my Guru, you know, I've, I, was, I was engaged in different tasks. But when I found the Guru, then everything is sorted out for me, you know. There is no longer this idea of like, it doesn't matter anymore because the Guru's grace, the Guru's kirpa is the highest thing for a Sikh. You know, it's like, you know, what do I have to fear about the different rules uh, of, of a job or uh, of, of my career if my, my boss, my CEO is just giving me a right, he's my right hand man, you know, like, what do I have to worry about the different implications that, that, the, that, the, that different rules have if the person who made the rules is on my side, you know? And so you will find recurring themes in Gurbani, Jantu Mere Wal Hai, Ta Kya Moshanda. If you are on my side, Ta Kya Moshanda. Like, well, what, I, what, do, what worries do I have in life? What, why do I have to worry about anything else if I have you? So it's like the focus of the Guru is always up here. It's always about Guru's grace. It's always about the, the, the compassionate God. It's always about like this idea of this benevolent creator, this benevolent creator who's always looking out for us. And if we attune ourselves there, then everything else just falls into place. So it's like those, lit, those other conversations are seen to be very minuscule it's not to, it's not seen to have that much importance in gurbani you know um, and for that reason i think you know we have a lot of room to play in uh, you know we are a very young community right it's been 350 years since our inception of the khalsa uh, about 350 years or more since the khalsa was founded right uh, Yes, in 350 years, like, I ask myself, like, what have we achieved? You know, and it's, it's probably not a whole lot, you know, uh, compar comparatively to other organizations that are well, well established in the world, right? But we're just young, you know, I think, uh, I think as time progresses, because we've, we've had such movement in our community as well, we're we haven't been, our roots have not been very well established, you know? For example, my, my grandfather, he was from Pakistan, right? So his, his upbringing is in Pakistan. My father, he's, he's brought up in India, right? I'm brought up in America, you know? Like, it's like, just the last three generations, we have not, just looking back at the last three generations, we have not had roots in the ground. Other communities, for example, the Germans, they came to America hundreds of years ago, right? The, the Italians, they've came to America. So their generations, you look at them, they're, the, they're well established, right? Their families might have good businesses or whatever it may be. Uh, they have like vacation homes, they have beach homes, they have, you know, growing up, it's like, where's our beach home? You know, <laughs> we don't have one, right? Uh, we barely had a home. <laughs> so it's like, we're, as a community, we financially, you know, we've been struggling. Uh, socially, we've been, we've been trying to adapt to our new environments, right? UK, Canada, America, Australia, wherever the Sikh population has went, there, there's just so much to who we are today, you know, that, uh, that th there's so many factors to that, you know. Um, for that reason, I think when I'm talking about the Guru and how we're going to interact, because we're going to interact with language, we're going to interact with culture, we're going to interact with, what did I write here? Country. We're going to interact with science, we're going to interact with people, we're going to interact with all these different things. When we interact with these people, what, do, what is our core foundation? And that core foundation is the Guru. It's going to be Gurbani, right? Uh, because Gurbani, again, speaks about the Tat. It speaks about the essence of reality. It speaks about this higher understanding. If we can zone into that, bring that into our hearts, instill it into our spirit, if we still into our spirit, then we interact with these different sectors of life that keep changing. We will be able to progress. We will be able to grow. Okay. Um, but until that doesn't happen, until, until the Guru is not a center part of our life, the way we interact with culture, language, people, science, whatever it is, we will fail. We will not be able to find who we are. Uh, as a sick people, you know, um, and, and, and that's, that's, that's kind of, you know, my understanding of this concept of if we're meant to grow, 
if we're meant to stay in Jaradikala, if we're co continuously meant to grow upwards, you know, then we need to have the Guru in our lives. Without the Guru, we cannot grow. That, that growing will never happen, you know. Uh, in, in Italian, there is this phrase, uh, in New York, when we used to go from uh, uh, the suburbs into the city, we, we used to pa take the Holland Tunnel, or whatever tunnel it was, Lincoln Tunnel. And uh, there's like 15 different ways to get into Manhattan, right? It's like, so whatever tunnel it was, there was a huge gate that would stay open. And on that gate, it would have a, it would have a, a phrase in Italian, in, 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 in Italian, in Italian? In, yeah, Italian, okay. And it was, it, it was translated to forever upwards. That was, that was what it was translated to. Hence, the idea of Jardikala. And that's why it's kind of started off by saying that the idea of Jardikala is not exclusive uh, to the Sikh tradition. It's, it, it, but it is, it is a central part of humanity. You know? And uh, you will see, if you look hard enough, you will see reoccurring, you will see this theme of Jardikala reoccurring in different, in different cultures, in different civilizations. You know? Uh, in different traditions, um, and and I think that's really important to do to to look at other to look at other cultures and other traditions because a it takes away our ego, you know. Uh, right now we're very egotistical as as a community, and and again these are kind of issues that I'm, I started off by saying that we're we're some, a community that prides itself for being a kali for being timeless is not being timeless. It's it's focusing on the past. It's is is focusing on is is focusing on very trivial issues. Is focusing on uh, the wrong things. And again, the idea there is because the guru is missing from our lives. You know, yes, the guru has been given a great, amazing place in our guru cars. Our guru cars are fantastic. You know, by Jagrat Singh, he used to say this that he used to say that Sikh, uh, uh, you know, guru kar used to be kache, Sikh used to be pakke, uh, but now it's the reverse. The, the Guru cars are pakke, but a Sikh are kachi. And, and, and the reason they're kachi again is because the Guru is missing from our lives. When we look at other traditions, other cultures, the, 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 our ego would diminish. And I was saying that right now, we, we as a community are very egotistical. We, we say that, you know, uh, 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 I don't want to get the nitty gritty, but we say a couple, couple of statements that can be refuted if, if a knowledgeable person is on the other end. You know? Uh, we say we, we have the highest amount of shahidiyya in our panth. You know, we, say, we, we pride ourselves in these things are something that we should be, you know, uh, we should have some sort of connection with. I'm not, I'm not taking that away from us. But to not acknowledge and be ignorant to the idea that other people have experienced something similar is, is a disservice to the idea of shahidiyya. It's a disservice to the idea of giving your life up, you know, for something greater uh, than you. Uh, for example, you know, there's this lady, uh, she, her name was St. Agnes, and uh, she's from the 4th century, uh, and uh, she was a devote, uh, a devote uh, a a devotee of, 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 of Jesus. And she was taken into a, a, a body, a, a, a saba, a court, you know, and uh, she was being stripped naked uh, because she did not want to convert uh, from her, from her, you know, from her love for her Ishtev, you know, uh, for Jesus. Uh, she didn't want to. Le she did not want to leave that, you know. Um, and for that, she was she was she was ordered to be raped or or, or stripped naked in, in front of many people. So as they took clothes off for her body. You know, what happened was, as they revealed her personal areas, her hair grew and covered those areas, those body parts. You know, as they, um, and if you're, if you're familiar with the story of the Mahabharat, you will notice the story of Draupati. You know, something very similar, ha similar happens to her when she was in, in a court and they were going to take away her honor, per se. You know, uh, clothes kept growing uh, around her where she, where they would rip off the clothes, you know. Uh, so this idea of devotion, this idea of, 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 of saving the honor of, of, of the saints, of the Pagats, is talked about in Gurbani, you know. Uh, in fact, when we talk about uh, Vidur Rara Sahib, the very first Shabbat that 
we incorporate into that Bani today is Har Jug Jug Pagat Upaya, Paj Rakta Aya Ram Raji. You know, okay, in every age, Har Jug Jug Pagat Upaya, the Pagats are created. And in every age, Paj Rakta Aya Ram Raji, that God Himself, the Creator Himself, Akal Puruk Himself, comes to protect the honor of those Pagats. Uh, when we talk about, you know, what's limiting us from reaching Chardikla as a community, you know, what's limiting us from reaching Chardikla as a community? Well, the very one thing we always talk about, homemade, and the idea of homemade, straying from homemade, is, uh, I think that's one, that's one huge factor that's limiting us as a community to experience Chardikla. Uh, because we're very, we're very uh, unfortunately, very egotistical in, 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 a few, in a few, you know, uh, different factors of, 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 of our, our tradition, you know, and it's unfortunate because I think the Guru did not attend for us to be so narrow-minded, you know, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the Guru attended for that because when we look at Anandpur Sahib Darbar, for example, you know, this is a, this is an area of research that I, I love to, I love, love diving into. Um, for 25 plus years, uh, the Guru set up a, 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 a library, you know, he set up a, a institution where, where philosophers, critical thinkers, scholars, you know, poets, creative people were, were, were invited to this land of Anandpur Sahib where they were given protection, they were given freedom, they were given liberty to explore their creative uh, ambitions, uh, you know, uh, which is, which is, which is astounding because if you look at the area of Punjab, especially the area of Anandpur Sahib, you'll find it's a very climate, is a very high cl uh, climate zone. It's not a very easy zone to operate in the land of literature, you know. Uh, Punjab itself is seen as a buffer state between the Middle East to Asia. It's, it's a scene of, it's, it's, a, it's an area where invaders, you know, people who would come through the Middle East to, to, to loot Asia will go through Punjab, you know. So Punjab was a heavily conflicted area. It wasn't, it wasn't a peaceful area where, where auntie would make roti all day long, you know, like they do today. It, it, was, it, was, a very, it was a very heavy area. And in that zone of Nanpur Sahib, if you, if you kind of localize into that zone, you'll notice something amazing. You'll notice that the Guru is operating in an area where right on top of their heads, literally, were these uh, Pahari Rajay, which we call these hill chiefs, you know, um, different regions of, of the, the base hills of, of the Himalayan mountains, you know, the Shivalik hills. It, it, Guru Sahib was literally in that in that area and he's he's working he's doing this amazing work and the, the whole mission of that work what would that what would the mission be when you look at when you look at Anandpur Sahib Darbar and the works that have come from it you know you'll see there are so many different texts literature being translated in the Anandpur Darbar there were there were Sufi texts there were there were Sanskrit texts there were Vedic texts there were there were texts about medicine there were so many different works of art uh, political texts there all these things were being uh, transcribed into the Gurmukhi Lippi. You know, it's and when I started off this this seems like a tangent. When I started off this idea of I was trying to talk about how the Guru did not attend for us to be so narrow minded because that twenty plus years, twenty five plus years of 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 work, you know, just tells me the mission of that was to make us very open minded to see what is out there in the world and how that compares to Gurma tradition. And I think where we kind of stumble, where the system kind of breaks is because we, don't, we just don't have that middle piece in our, in, in our, in our spirit anymore. We just don't have the, the Guru or his words in our spirit anymore. It's, 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 there's a void within six. And it's not the fault of the six. Again, there's been so many factors. But I think today, you know, we're very blessed uh, to be on our foot, uh, on our feet, you know, um, we're either first generation or second generation, whatever generation we are, we, we are, uh, you know, I, I feel we're very lucky to be where we are now. The, the time for learning is here, you know, I think the time for learning is here um, and it starts with Gurbani, you know, it starts with Gurbani. If we are ever to progress as a community, if we're ever to grow, continuously grow, you know, and this is, this is what human civilization has been doing. Okay, uh, I'm not going to use words here, I'm going to use a graph. It'll be easier to read. This is, this is the caveman period. Uh, it's, it's like, it's 
so you're growing, 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 right? Um, and then out and over, like, you know, where it's, it's it, it. so the f a form of communication here, we, we went to a museum yesterday, me and, uh, and, and uh, Dr. Shamshir Singh, and in the, in the museum, like there was, there was uh, art forms of, uh, uh, of, of the, native, uh, the indigenous people, right? Uh, of con con Canada primarily, I think. And the art forms that they had were, were physical sculptures, right? So this was the way of com communicating information back then, right? With, uh, during, during our, our civilization, that were prior, our like, you know, early human civilization, this is the way they communicated information, was through for, from art forms, right? Physical sculptures, drawings. So even if you look at the caveman period, the way they, they, they didn't have a written language, they had drawings. They would draw on the, on the, on the walls, right? They will do that kind of stuff. So drawings. Okay, I lied. There's got to be some words. And then, then comes this period of, 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 of literature. Then writing, you know, writing takes the, the command of, of, of how humans communicate with each other. You know, how, communicate, how humans communicate information with each other. And this was the time period, you know, if you look at the gurus, how, what they left behind for us. They didn't leave behind much drawings for us. You know, I don't know if you, if you found any drawings done by Guru Sahib, but you will find writings by the Guru. Obviously, Gurbani is all writings by the Guru, but you will actually find Guru Sahib's own handwriting as well. You know, so they, they were engaged in passing on information to us um, th through this way. But my point being is now today, we are continuously growing like the way if last hundred years or even uh, I'm born in 92, 1992, you know, from 1992, you know, to now, like I, I saw so much change, like exponential <laughs> change. You know, uh, for example, this this thing right here. Like I didn't have this as a kid. You know, uh, uh, no one had this as a kid. You know, we had this huge dinosaur thing that, was, like, if you had it in your house, you were like the most richest guy in the world, right? And then we had like Star Wars or little games so under uh, Minecraft or whatever. And it, that was it. And then came, you know, dial up, then came DSL, then came, you know, a fiber internet. Like it's, it's such a huge increase in the way human civilization is growing, how we communicate, how we pass on information to each other. You know, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet you guys today. I just send us, I put a story up on my, my page like two, three hours before I come. That's unheard of, right? Like 20 years ago, you know, it's not too far away. So my, I, what I'm trying to say is that the world is continuously growing at a very fast rate. You know, things are changing at a very fast rate. Uh, but, and, and if we want uh, as six to be part of that grow, uh, to be a part of that gro growth, uh, then we need to connect. Uh, we need to have this connection uh, with the Guru. Uh, otherwise, we will lose ourselves. Um, and, uh, you know, you know, coming, coming into this path of Sikhi, you know, my, my family, uh, my uh, grandparents from both sides, my Nanki and Dadki, they were both Amritari families, you know, so we have a lineage of Amritaris. Um, then in my parents' generation, that kind of, that kind of tradition of carrying Amrit uh, broke, you know, it became, became like what you call Sajtaris, you know. Um, and then it, here, in, it, when it came to my, came to me, you know, in my 20s, uh, I explored the idea of Amrit and I came onto this path of Sikhi, you know. But since I've came onto this path, I feel like, you know, it, it, we as a community have been so confused, you know. Um, uh, are, we, are we Punjabi? Are we Canadians? Like, you know, are we, uh, are we Indian or are we Americans? It's like, there, there's been so many different, like, conversations that I've, I've kind of been part of and I let go because I didn't have the answer or I, people around me didn't have the answer, you know? And I, I think for me right now, I really feel very happy with this answer that, that if we want to experience continuous growth, a growth if we want to experience the idea of Jardikala, uh, then as six, we need to find our roots in the Guru, uh, in Gurbani. You know, that has to be our, our foundation. Without that, we will not be able to make wise decisions. We will not be able to understand how we're meant to interact with the Canadian culture. We will not be able to understand how to interact with the Punjabi culture. We will not be able to inter interact, how do we in interact with the Punjabi language? Like, all those different topics of, of, of concern cannot be answered uh, 
adequately without, without the connection to the Guru. Uh, so what can we do to, 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 kind of, to kind of establish that foundation? Well, the very first thing could be Saj Bhatt. You know, Saj Bhatt kariye, Santhya layye. You, I know you guys are already on that path, you know, of doing Santhya, of doing Saj Bhatt. You know, and then slowly but surely, I think the, the next step would be to, to understand the, the various languages in Gurbani, you know, to understand the various contexts implied in Gurbani. And that's, that itself is a, is a lifetime journey, you know. I was speaking to one of my friends and I was saying that, you know, there's sometimes I will receive a hukkanama from Guru Sahib and I'll be at loss of words. I, I don't know what it means, you know. Um, and uh, that's, that's me telling you this after, you know, many years of, of, of in studying and being a part of this, uh, you know, uh, this field, you know. And uh, there's, so there'll be Shabbat's where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what it means, you know, and it, it's, it takes, you know, it's, so it's a lifetime journey. I'm not saying that we will understand uh, Gurbani in the next five years, but the next five years we can understand a whole lot, you know. Um, and then that relationship with the Guru is, this is another, this is another layer to this conversation. The, the, the relationship to the Guru is part of that magic, you know. We, so understanding Gurbani from a very, you know, uh, academic level is that's just that's you putting your brain into things. So you have to do that, right? Like you have to understand Gurbani from an academic level. But then the second layer to that is, is is the relationship part, is the spirit part. You know, it's it's the it's the part that that like I said creates magic. It's like the part that a a guy and a girl uh, or sorry, a husband and a wife experience. Like it's the, it's the part that a brother and a sister experience. It's a part that a mom and a son experience. Like it's that it's that inner spirit that we started off the conversation with which is really important to have as well you know and that's the second layer and that layer is going to be every single part of your life you know you know what i mean it's not like just the part that lives in the gurdwara it's not just in the gurdwara you know it's the part that lives with you every single moment of your life the moment you wake up the moment you go to bed the moment you sleep the moment you think the moment everywhere you go that relationship, that spirit will never leave you and should never leave you. You know, it's, 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 the, it's, it's the very thing that even if you don't have the academic knowledge, this will be enough for you to survive, you know, in this world and beyond. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's, the, it's the love you have for the Guru, you know. So, with that, I kind of want to focus on a few things that, that we as six do to represent Jaradikala. You know, we, we engage in, 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 in kind of, for lack of a better word, symbolism. You know, we have symbols that we see throughout, throughout, throughout the, the globe that represents this idea of Chartikla. Can, can you tell me what those symbols might be? What those kind of is, insignias might be? Nishans? Langar. Langar, very good. Hanji? Nishan Seb kind of gave that away. Nishan Seb. What up? Bana. Very good. Kanda. Can I put the Kanda up there? There was a very interesting video and I was talking, I was talking with my friend about this. Uh, this, like nine days ago, someone posted a video, a uh, Punjabi guy, you know, and he's just like, his whole video, was, uh, the thesis of the video was the Kanda is not, is not, a, is not a sick Nishan. He's like, his whole thesis was the Khanda is made by the British, right? And he's just like, he's on this whole rant of how the Khanda is invented by the British and blah, 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 right? And, you know, I, I found that video to be, A, very dishonest. Like, there was no, uh, there was nothing backing his statements. Like, there was no research, nothing. It was just, just randomly, random guy speaking about, like, how, what he believes to be uh, wrong with the Khanda. And then, B, I found that to be a very, uh, uh, kind of like, almost like an attack to, to sentiments. You know, people's sentiments because the kanda is not is not just a piece of design. You know that we put on our clothes. Like the symbol of the kanda is is very important to to Sikh faith. You know, and and regardless of when it's when it, it the time of its inception, if it was in the 17th century or the 18th century, 19th, it the fact is today it's is a very important part of our culture, our our dynamics as as Gursiks. You know, and it, there's, there's so much value in that kanda. You know, when a, when a Sikh looks at the kanda, they're just like, wow, like they, they remember God. 
you know, remember Vaigru Ji, remember Akal Parikh Vaigru. So it's like, you know, it's, it's very important to, uh, I guess, sorry, uh, evaluate, you know, information that we receive. Okay, so Khanda, Langar, Nishansa, Bana, what else? What else could be a symbol, a symbol that we, we use to, to show Chartikala? Shastar, very good. Anything else? Any last name? Yeah. Seva, very good. Yeah. So the, these these kind of like elements to, of 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 how we portray ourselves in society, you know, um, how we portray ourselves within our in our communities, you know, each each of these things show that idea of jyotikla, you know, um, and as you kind of see with this this kind of graph we kind of created here, the central part of of both of these ideas here is the Sikh and the Guru, you know, and, and kind of going back to this idea of, 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 of the connection between the two. It's so important for everything else to flourish. Right now, what's, what's happening is the Sikh and the Guru are missing, and the other, the things around are there. But because the Sikh and the Guru are missing, because the Surat and the Shabbat are missing, everything else is there is just causing is causing uh, confusion, it's causing chaos almost, you know, it's causing disruption, it's like, you know, like uh, all, these, all these things are causing some type of uh, discomfort, you know, within, within, within not only our community, but how we portray ourselves outside. And again, that just kind of comes down to this. It is an abstract idea, you know, of, of what I kind of dived into, and it's kind of probably a non-traditional approach to the idea of Chartikla. And uh, I think I took this non-traditional approach because these are things that were in my mind, you know, uh, for a couple of months now. I've, I've been trying to, I've just been trying to observe, you know, trying to learn what, what's, what's in our community and, and what are we doing wrong? What are we doing right? You know, what, what do our next five, 10 generations look like, you know, as six? And when I looked at, especially that, what do our next 10 generations look like? I was faced with this, with these, uh, these topics and this conversation. You know um, that we have a great root system. The 238 years that Guru Sahib was physical in their body, from Guru Nanak to Guru Gobind Singh, this they've done a whole lot. They've done a whole lot. They, you know, it's 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 very divine what they've done. You know, the the work they've done and and how that kind of institutionalized into the Khalsa. You know, and that puts a huge responsibility on our shoulders as the Khalsa and what, what we will do moving forward, you know. Um, so, so yeah. Any questions, any comments? Hadi. If, uh, when speaking about rooting ourselves with our connection with Guru Maharaj, I think sometimes that can sound like a very abstract concept. It can be difficult to like wrap your head around. Yeah. Especially when you're talking about like the spiritual or the emotional idea of yeah. it, right? Um, do you have any ideas or thoughts as to how we could progress in that direction? How we could build that connection? Yeah, yeah. For me personally, I, every time I listen to, like, for me personally, every time I listen to the good in my heart, like I, I know that might sound cliche. Every time I listen to the good in my heart, I feel like I'm getting closer to God. I'm closer, getting closer to Guru Sahib, you know. And and uh, uh, this is this is kind of like an idea that I have. I could be wrong, but I feel that reforming our mind is akin to the idea of getting closer to Guru Sahib. It's one and the same. It's not like two different things. It's not like if we reform our mind, we stray ourselves from calm, growth, low, mohankar. If we stray ourselves from that, we engage in love. Like that's separate from. Dwell, getting closer to Guru Sahib. I, I, I really believe they're the same, you know, like, but the idea there is that Bhagavad Gabiji says that your one task in this world, you know, is, is to reform your mind, you know. Uh, so I really feel like when I listen to the goodness in my heart, you know, to, in any situation, whether that be, I don't know, it's, it's something very simple. Let's say someone, someone says something about me, you know, they, they, they curse me out, right? Uh, when that, when that, that person attacks with their words, their energy, whatever, and it's coming to me, in that split second, you know, before I fire back, you know, if I'm able to like really go into that grounding, 
that I'm meant to receive from Naam and Bani and all that kind of stuff. If I if I go into that grounding, you know, like mana koi ga nahi, it's it's fine, you know, ki ida pala ho be, you know, kind of thing, you know. And I, I respond back with with goodness, you know. I I feel like that really helps my personal relationship with the Guru grow uh, to the point where, you know, it's 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 like I don't have to constantly. I always feel like Guru Sahib is with me, you know. It's like, you know, I always feel that I. That if something bad is happening, and I was sharing this yesterday uh, with my friends, if something bad is happening in my life, it's not bad. It's not. It's not bad. It's 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 probably the best thing because I I really do see like I really do feel his presence, you know, within that bad, you know, Hanji. How do you balance responsibility with the idea of hukum and finding sweetness in what they do? I think when when we talk about responsibility, you know, it, it, there is a fine line of of you know how much we are meant to assume responsibility of. Like, what I mean by that is that someone explained it to me this way. I, I don't I don't know how how much it will hold over time, but it, if it fits in my mind right now, that we're meant to sit on the seat of, 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 of responsibility, we're meant to sit on the seat of throne or rule or whatever, but not be attached to that seat. You know, as in like, uh, today I've, I've, given this responsi- I've been given this responsibility of, of sharing some thoughts with you guys, you know what I mean? Uh, tomorrow, you know, one of you guys or someone else might, might be way better than what, I'm, what, I'm, what I can do, you know? So this seat is for them, you know. I should, I should, you know, pass on, pass on that seat to the next person, right? Like it's like, um, I guess the the mission will always be that charitikla. The mission will always be sweetness. The mission will always be, you know, guru sab the hokum. Like that will always, always be what we're aiming for. And our responsibility towards that, you know, it, the the key players in in that in that journey to that place can always change. That's you know, we're in that changing era. We're in that we're in that place that are not timeless. That will keep changing. You know, and and like we said over there, people will change. You know, so people's mindsets changes. You know, sometimes you 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 have so many people in our history who started off like amazing, and then like a few years later they went crazy. You know, it's just like, whoa, what happened to this guy? Right? So it's like, um, I think I, I think that's one one thing I would say is that. We are meant to take that step, you know. We're meant to keep taking that step towards our goal of hukum, of, of Guru Sahib's hukum. Uh, but along the way, if 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 we're not meant to, I think we're not meant to be egotistical of, of our responsibility. You know, I meant to. I think we're meant to look at it as a more of a community initiative, like just like the idea of how human civilization has progressed. You know, it's, it, I think it's meant to be a very very it's, uh, inclusive kind of approach to the idea. Thank you guys so much for your time uh, to the Saki Sikhya team, to so, Sukhinder Singh Ji, Simran Singh, uh, Fenji, all everyone. Uh, you know, really appreciate your time and uh, this uh, this effort to bring me on here. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys very soon. Aao fateh palaye, pul chuka dikhe magushni. Vai Guru Ji ka khasa, Vai Guru Ji ki fateh. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guruji's message. Link is in the description below. Vaheguruji ka khalsa, Vaheguruji ki fateh. Vaheguru.